Welcome back to Believe in Softball. I'm your host, Jenna Becerra, and this week I'm coming to you from Whitefish, Montana. It is one of my favorite places. I first came here about seven years ago with close friends who are really more like family, and I hadn't been back in a long time, so I've been really excited to be here. For those on video, I don't know if I can ever compete with Kama's background of just the gorgeous Hawaiian scenery, but if you can see the landscape here, this is as close as it gets, I think, and I got the local ice cream shop t-shirt going as well, and I got to celebrate my birthday here, so I think that's a win. So some quick reminders for the show, follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Believe in Softball, that's B-L-E-A-V. Believe in Softball is also on YouTube, so subscribe there. The video is really cool. You can see some cool backgrounds, for example. Really good idea to do that. All right, let's go through today's batting order. First, we'll cover our bases, give you some news and call-outs from around the softball world. Then we'll head into today's interview, which is part two of my conversation with Kamalani Dung. In part one, you heard it, we covered a lot. She talked about how she plays for the 99, or basically the 99% out there who might not have all the advantages, but who can still make it to that 1% of athletes who do get to play at the highest levels, like she did. It's pretty fitting because today is part two, is our 99th episode of Believe in Softball since we started this show two years ago. So just add that to the list of why this is for the 99. We go even deeper today. Then we'll end things with the foul tip of the week, which are tips to help us keep going and get better. All right, let's go. Covering our bases. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to wager on all your favorite sports, contests, and events with first to market odds and lines. Find reviews and news for every league, including Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, esports, and even golf. Bet online continues to be the top online resource for all your sports information from live in game betting, props, and futures. Head to Bet Online today or use your mobile device to join today and make your first sports bet. Use our promo code BELIEVE50, that's 50, to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts. When it comes to the college game, there has been a ton of movement. And one thing that I want to call out is that Joe Evans is now the head coach at UCSB, University of California at Santa Barbara. It was announced at the beginning of the summer, just for a reminder, that the longtime coach of Texas A&M would be leaving. And it was a bit shocking. She had literally been there forever. A ton of alums and just people in the softball community shared public thank yous for all that she did for them, for the program, and for softball. We know Trisha Ford obviously has since replaced her there, but we didn't yet know what Joe would be doing next. Turns out she'll be in sunny California, just about 40 minutes or so north of where I grew up. And I think it is a huge get for a mid-major program like this. Just the knowledge and the expertise that she has from Power 5 in the Big 12, as well as the SEC most recently, is going to be incredible. And you know what? Who knows? Maybe UCSB will eventually be in the conversation with the JMUs of the world. So I'm just excited for her in this next phase in her new home. And then far from home, at least for us here in the States, recently was the Japan All-Star Series. It was back in Yokohama Stadium in Tokyo. Over 12,000 people were there. That is an awesome thing about Japan. They do draw the crowds. They love their softball, which is great. Japan won the first game against USA. Then USA took game two. Japan ultimately won the rubber match. And it was Miu Goto. She was great in the circle once again. We also saw that in the Olympics last year. For context, too, the USA roster, all but one, Ali Carta, were college players. So she was the only veteran that was really a part of that squad, which was an interesting dynamic and also a good sign of future talent. But I think it was an example, too, of just the great international rivalry between these two nations continuing. But there's also a lot of respect there, too, because one of the most significant moments was after the game. Both teams got together on the field for a picture with LA 2028 spelled out in softballs in the grass. Since we know softball is not in Paris 2024, there is obviously a huge push to get it in for 2028. The host nation can propose it, but the IOC has to review it, and the decision is supposed to come soon. And if there's one thing that everyone in the softball world can agree on, it's that softball should be in the Olympics, especially for softball-loving host countries like the U.S. in 2028 and even Australia for Brisbane 2032. There are also a lot of Olympians, at least from this past round in Tokyo, that have been competing in Athletes Unlimited. Week two just completed. It feels crazy that we're almost halfway already. 
but a few call outs that I wanted to highlight. Deja Malipola is atop the leaderboard. Her team went undefeated. I just think this is important because one of the unique things about AU is that the top players don't just need to play well, they also need to coach well or be a good GM. And I'm always impressed when players can get a handle really well on both, but especially when they're young and new to the professional level, like Deja. At the same time, we talk about how catchers like her generally do make good head coaches. There's an understanding of the big picture and how the entire field works. They're used to managing people and personalities just like they do with pitchers and an entire staff. There's also that game within the game, sort of like calling pitches, but that just aspect of having to make decisions. All of those things and those skills are there for catchers. And I just have to say that Deja is doing a great job. Another really cool moment is that rookie Rachel Lewis from Northwestern got her first start. And I just think this is cool for a few reasons. She took advantage of the opportunity. We always like to see that. And she went two for three at the plate. She also did it back in a purple uniform. So just not too long after seeing her compete at the World Series for Northwestern, we see her back in purple. It's just, you know, I love these kind of stories. I think it just makes the game sweeter. Now going into week three, based on the performances, the captains, in addition to Molly Pola, are going to be McClenny, Chittister, and Jaquish. And, you know, we've seen Amanda Chittister and Savannah Jaquish a lot in those seats. We haven't seen McClenny as much in that captain seat as you might expect in Athletes Unlimited. She is legitimately one of the best players in the world. I am particularly impressed by just her controlled aggressiveness, is what I would call it. What I mean by that is she's very intentional and slow in her approach in the box, yet she still explodes with bat speed and has great hands, for example. And some of the best players that I have ever played with, including new Stanford Hall of Famer Ashley Hansen and four-time All-American Alyssa Haber come to mind. Those two, by the way, first two episodes we ever had on the show, they were extremely good at this. And it reminds me of them, especially Haber a little bit, similar swings. But I think it's also a similar aspect with just her reads and her range defensively in the outfield, too, for McClenny. So I'm just excited to see her back in this role. And speaking of roles, a few new ones for some actresses who get to play female baseball players. The new A League of Their Own series is coming to Amazon Prime starting August 12th. We all know and love the classic movie, obviously, but for those who have been living under a rock, go watch it now. You'll probably quote it all the time, like I do, and everyone else does. But I've mentioned before on the show how it's really the only mainstream film showing women playing a bat and ball sport. And so I'm excited to see this expanding. We talk about how representation matters. This is an example. And I hope it only means that more is coming and even beyond the A League of Their Own franchise. One other cool aspect, too, is that UCLA is 2019 National Championship Battery, a friend of the show, Rachel Garcia, and Paige Halstead were at the promotional game for this, which I think is just awesome. But somebody else who has created a league of her own is today's guest. So Kamalani Dung is back. Let's hear the rest of the interview. But you did say that you took that year off, right? And like you said, it's like you need it for mental health, physical health, honestly, all every part of health. (laughs) You kind of need breaks sometimes, right? And you did a lot of really cool things during that time. Like, so how, I don't know, how would you characterize that time that you spent away from the game for a little bit? Yeah, I'd I'd say that I spent it kind of just experimenting and exploring just opportunities of life. I I had come out of a a really long relationship and everything was different. I mean, I was in a relationship for almost half of my life and I had this relationship with softball, which was my whole life. So it was it was kind of a, a lot of things were up in the air and I was coming to a place that I wanted to play softball, not because I was forced to, because I felt like that's the only thing I could do, but I wanted to play because I knew that I loved it and that's why I was playing. So I wanted to take a step away. I had a really good experience of, um, I'm really the type of person that like, I like to try things and just to, just to be able to say like, if I really wanted to, I could have did that, you know? Like, yeah, yeah. So, so um, I, I went and worked for a little bit for, um, a software co- company in New York um, had a really good time. I made my way up to like a senior executive really quickly, um, working in brands and partnerships. So it was really yeah. cool. I got to work with people like I don't know, like the Chiefs. I got to work with like huge brands like Walmart, HelloFresh. So 
just talking to like all these CEOs, CMOs, and then dealing with like some of the top athletes in the world, trying to facilitate a deal for Logan Paul, Jake Paul. And I was just like, how did I even get here? (laughs) This is insane. So just having that experience and being able to like really see the back end side of like business and learn all of these things was really awesome for me. Um, It was crazy because it really like, you know, those when you're listening to like audiobooks or like motivational videos, it's like you got to get up at 3 a.m. and you got to do this and blah, blah, blah. Like that was literally me in that time. That was like 100 percent me. Like I would wake up at 3 a.m. I would get on my phone call from Hawaii because I was working remote in Hawaii and then my company was in New York. So I'd be up at 3 a.m. 3.15. We had an all team meeting. So I roll out of bed, hair is looking a mess. I still got, you know, like crust on them. And I'm just, everyone's just like, comma, please. I'm just like, guys, like it's 3 a.m. I don't know what you want me to do about this. (laughs) Like I'm trying. (laughs) Yeah, I was like working hard, hard. Um, But it was really good. It was a really good learning experience. Got so many connections in the business world. So I felt super confident in myself. Like, oh, okay. Like if I really wanted to do this corporate life thing, like, That wasn't that hard. And that was something that actually, I mean, if anybody listening in has ever had doubts as an athlete, like I know going through college, I mean, sports takes up your whole time. You know, it's a full time job and it's really hard to get some sort of internship and stuff. I throughout my time worked with my um, like the athletics department and I would do small marketing internships just to kind of get like the best of both worlds and I mean do a little bit here and there to put it on my resume for a couple years before I graduate but yeah I mean it was really hard for me to come out and like think about having my resume with like just sports on it which is a totally wrong way to think about it considering that like so many people value sports and like the amount of effort that you have to put in it shows that you can work on a team it shows like hard work and dedication like an athlete is probably the best worker that you're going to get in general. Yeah. But for some reason, it was like this weird, like, uh, it was like a weird spot for me. Like, I felt really uncomfortable with it. I felt like I didn't know how to do a job if I needed to hop into one. I never had one before. So I felt yeah. I felt really self-conscious about it. So I think just jumping into that and then seeing that my athletic side really kicked in. Like, I got so competitive. I made it to one of our top salespeople immediately. And it was kind of just like a refresher and an awesome thing that I do tell all the kids when I talk to them, like, this is like, it's not something to be worried about. Like, as an athlete, you are more than prepared for the workforce and for whatever job you want. Like, you have the skills of hard work, determination, you know what it takes to win, you know what it takes to work on on a team, be a leader, uh, be a servant leader. So you have all of these different skills, showing up on time, et cetera, pushing yourself. So you are overqualified for these jobs for sure. So I think that when I'm when I'm preaching to people and preaching to the younger generation, I'm just like, really don't hold back. Like just because you play softball doesn't mean you can't be a senior executive at a software company in New York. You know, like there's literally no limitations to whatever you feel in your heart because you are overqualified and I can guarantee that and it just comes back down to the same way you look at sport like how bad do you want it how how hard are you going to outwork the person next to you are you going to show up a little bit early five minutes early are you going to put in the extra work make the extra phone call you know take the extra course to learn a little bit more about maybe sales networking whatever it may be you know so it's just it's all the same thing as sport um So I think when it comes to like building confidence there in myself, that was something that I needed to see because I was like, okay, yeah, like, yeah, I got this for sure. So I think once I did that, I was able to kind of switch over and realize that I I wanted to kind of experience just like enjoying life a little bit. So I was able to get into like opening my own like marketing company where I was able to start working through some brand deals. And I've had so many people reach out to me like, every softball player ever and just so many people um and this was all before like nil was a thing so this was like people were already starting to think about like how can i get partnerships how can i do this blah 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 so um that's where i i started to help some people but i was just so busy that i was never able to like fully dive into it um but yeah from there i was 
I was kind of just like doing doing everything and anything just to see like how it was. Like I went to the Grammys. Got yes. To watch, yes. Like what? I went to the Grammys representing Kini Zamora. Um, I went with Tanya Joaquin, who is this amazing uh, news personality here in Hawaii. And I represented Kini Zamora brand and Mana Ola. And then I went with my boyfriend and his family. So it was just, it was so much fun. I, I literally saw everyone and their mother perform there. John Legend <laughs> performed. Um, Billie Eilish. Uh, the driver's license girl. What is her name? <laughs> What is that song? I'm not going to sing it because there's no way I'm going to let myself have a recording of me available in this world of me. I'll, so I'll let you slide. Yeah, I'll let you slide on that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was just so cool. And just seeing everybody was dressed up to like the max there. It was That was like a really crazy experience for me. And, you know, like... From moving from the Grammys to like premiering in NCIS, just like doing some some side work, um, and then doing another side cameo in a new movie com- coming out called Piahi, um, and then moving to North Shore Hawaii and just like living in this mansion with some of my friends, and it was just. I'm pretty sure 2021 was just like that might have been a dream completely. I'm not sure if it actually happened or not because that was the most crazy random year of my life. Um, Yeah. In a great way. Yeah. Yes. And in the most amazing way of I was really in a mindset of just like sending it and just I, I really wanted to push myself to all limits and just see like what I was truly capable of. Like, you know, like, why not? We this life is not super long like it's a short life yeah might as well like try my best to live each and every day like very intentionally so like yes making sure that I have a really good day making sure I surround myself with quality people making sure that I do something out of my comfort zone because the comfort zone is definitely where where you die for sure like if you stay in that you're you're gonna question a lot of things about your life um if you're if you're not continuously pushing yourself and growing and and pursuing your passions and your goals, you know? So yeah. I think that was a big thing was, is just, you know, being that person that kind of just sets the example of, you know, just go for it. I mean, I'm a small town girl from Waianae. I, I sh- not that I shouldn't have had any of the things that I've had, but like, it's truly just, it's been like amazing from hard work to like, just truly embracing the next opportunity that has always come to me. So I've gotten to these amazing levels in softball and and it's definitely something that's not going to stop there. So I know that in my personal life as well, I strive to just reach these levels of just ultimate experience and, you know, and trying to impact and leave everyone in a better place than I left when in a better place than when I met them, for sure. Yeah. Well, you've you've hit on well a lot of things that I love, <laughs> but a couple <laughs> too many things. Uh, all, all amazing things. But a couple of things that I really like. One is like you're talking about like exploration, basically, because we we do ourselves a disservice by not pushing ourselves and exploring new things. And you have like fully embraced that, which I, I love to hear, because I think that's how you figure out what you love, what you like. And we're not just softball players. It's so much bigger than that, like you said earlier. Right. So it's understanding like what are the other parts of myself? But you can't really do that unless you try things. And even if you try something and you don't like it, it's like, great, that's a process of elimination. You know, that's not my thing. Cool. And you kind of keep moving on to the rest. And that can still be productive too. I feel like we all as athletes are so wired to be like, well, we want to always make progress. We need to be super productive and efficient and all of these things. And it's like, okay, but sometimes there's different types of efficiency or productivity, you know, that are beyond just like whatever sounds good on paper or whatever it is we think we're supposed to do. So I really love that example that you've set. And especially just like you said, understanding what we bring to the table as athletes. I will tell you when I was first interviewing for jobs after college, the first like two or three, I kind of didn't really bring up softball other than like a brief. Yeah, I played softball at Stanford, you know, but that was it. And then yeah, exactly, you know, and 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 because I was the same as you, I was like, ah, I don't know if that that's what they're looking for. I don't know if they'll just think I'm a jock, whatever it is. And I didn't get those jobs because it wasn't really being my full self. 
But then I had an interview um, after that where I was like, you know what, I'm just going to be myself. And I talked a lot about softball and the different lessons I've learned that would apply to that role, all that sort of stuff, exactly like you said. And that's the one that worked out, right? So it's like, it's like a combination of a lot of things, but there's just a level of your story that's like authenticity, exploration, like translating, I don't know, like skills you've learned from sports to the rest of your life, but just like allowing yourself to be a full person, if that makes sense. Exactly. Yes. I, I feel like everybody really likes to put themselves in this this bubble and especially with NIL and stuff like the social media telling you that you always have to like niche down and do a certain thing it was it I was going through such a mental crisis of like but like what if I don't want to just be one thing you know like what if I want to be more things what if I I want to travel the world what if I want to do this what if I want to be a business person like I I don't need to feel like I only can do this one thing and that At one point, it almost felt like everyone, I almost connected my identity to softball when I was starting to come out of softball, where it was just like, without softball, I had this weird feeling of like, who am I, you know? And like, what, what is my value? What is my worth? Um, I mean, we spent our whole lives, I mean, I practiced every day, played games on every weekend, missed all these events. And then you come out of college, which your whole experience is sport. And you're kind of just like, oh, snap, I haven't even... I haven't even thought about like, what do I like outside of the sport? What do I like? <laughs> For like, real? Even am I? Are like all these questions that I was asking myself. And I feel like it's a thousand percent something that everyone goes through in any yeah. sport. I mean, if you get to that high of a level, you've had to work so hard to get there. And then the fact that I, I've had this thought so many times of just like, it's interesting that people can train in so many things and sports is one of the few where it's like it just it stops immediately like Mm. you can get a trade in like a lot of different things computer science you work in music from a young age and you can do it your whole life you know but sports it's like it doesn't matter who you are whether you're you're somebody who graduated college went professional whether you're Tom Brady I mean one day or another you're it's it's you can't you can't play forever which is just the most annoying thing ever but (laughs) like it's just it's true it's it's a thing that one day you just won't be able to play anymore and it's just like some of us prolong that a little bit longer than others but (laughs) um it's just something that I I really preach to the next generation to really think about you know like I want these young women growing up to know that if you want to play pro softball then heck yeah let's do it let me show you the way if you want to be a businesswoman if you want to be a mom if you want to do all these things like yes use sport to build yourself as a, this authentic powerful woman first and then softball is next you know so um really just trying to encourage people to think about think about life a little bit more you know like oh what do you like what's your personality what what are you passionate about and of course, you're still going to be the best softball player ever if I'm training you because I'm not going to let you slide. Um, but also, you're going to be the best woman, the best future mother, the best businesswoman, or whatever it may be that they want to be. Yeah. So I think, yeah, the, these are just all things that I've been kind of working through. I feel like it's almost a really foreign space. I mean, I feel like it's it's hard for all athletes of all sports to, to, to go through the feelings of being done with their sport. So it, I'm, I'm definitely doing what I do best, which is paving a road and navigating this path. And hopefully again, in this category, um, I'll be able to like pave something, put something together. I, I have like my organization that I'm starting up and um, hoping for for some funding and stuff in the, in the near future. So yeah, I, I think that's just definitely my purpose here on earth is to set an example, spread the good Aloha vibes and really just pave, pave the path in different categories. You know, I, I love testing the status quo. I love seeing if we can do more than just be a softball player, do more than just be a college person, be more yeah. than what, what the world sets on us and what social media and the world wants us to think like you can be so much more. And that's, that's my goal in life is to just empower everyone to do whatever they're passionate about. I don't even care what it is. Like you can be like the best underwater 
basket weaver ever like literally <laughs> go and do it like you better be the best at it though and you better do it wholeheartedly and be so happy you know so yeah. I think that's 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 my thing right now <laughs> yes because you said it so much of our life is after most of our lives are going to be after the actual playing of the sport for for the athletes yes. right I mean if we're lucky if we're lucky to live like a nice long life so mm-hmm. what are we just supposed to like shut down after no yeah. you know like that's not how it works and it doesn't mean like you said you're you're helping young athletes still um, and you will even at, when you do decide to retire from actually playing the game it's not like you all of a sudden can't be connected to your sport at all it's just different totally. you're not you know and that's okay but it goes yeah. back to what you said before it's like all of the things that we have learned and the skills that we've gained can go into anything else that we want to do it, it doesn't yes end. <laughs> preach <laughs> <laughs> right but that's like that's what you're an example of that's why it's like coming to me right now is because like that is what your story has been you said it you're like paving a path is what I do you know yeah that's that's 100% spot on bullet point everything that I just rambled about for the last 20 <laughs> minutes <laughs> no but it's like, great you're telling the stories yeah. that make this real you know mm-hmm. yeah I mean that's that's just the goal at the end of the day really just inspiring people to like once you graduate you don't have to lose everything that you just did and then create this new you because that sucks and I've I feel like I've almost tried it you know where it's just like you kind of just like cut it off and you're like all right that's done you're a little sad deep down inside but you try to move on it's just really realistic I'm being really open here and then you get to a point where you're like gosh I'm starting from ground zero like I feel so behind everyone so it's like Don't, don't do that. Don't forget about everything that you've learned. Really just take everything that you've learned in sport and then move it to your new passion. And even you can like interweave it a little into your new passion. But like, I just, I think a big thing is just not forgetting who you are, where you you came from and what got, got you this far for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it's so easy for us to do that. Like you said, we get to a point where we're like, who are we? What are we doing? And it's like, you're still you. You know, it's just, Mm -hmm. but it's, it's figuring that out. And that's why it's not like there's a blueprint. We all go through this. It's a very common experience yet. None of us fully know what we're doing or even how we got through it. So it's not like we can say, Hey, so-and-so when your career's over, do this exact set of steps and you'll be fine. It's like, that's not really how it works, but maybe there's some comfort in knowing that it's not just us, you know? Yeah, totally. Like it's something normal that everyone goes through. And I think what I've found that really helps me is really just integrating what I've learned my whole life into these other passions and really just having fun, you know, like life is really just meant to be fun. And it, it, sometimes I know we can get caught up with wanting like our finances to be good, social media pressures. And then for softball, like sometimes you don't feel like you're performing your best, but you know, at the end of the day, it's just, it really comes back to just enjoying life and like surrounding yourself with good people, finding your passion, surrounding yourself love is a big one for me that was something that I was really trying to rediscover um, yeah. outside of softball and just trying to find find those things that are just really real and I think that's that's some things that we have to remember kind of just slow ourselves down and say like I remember why I started playing softball was yeah. for the love of the sport was to get out get out of the house and be around my friends and you know so I think anybody who's going through a hard time with it mentally it's kind of like just rewind a little bit go back to like your inner child and really just remember why you're playing and and what got you there and make it a little bit more simple because it's it's really just all a part of this this journey that we have our little blimp on earth you know so might as well make make it as as enjoyable as we can (laughs) yes everything you've talked about too is that you remember that you cherish the most. Of course, there's some accomplishments. Like, yeah, you won a gold medal with Puerto Rico. That's a big deal. Of course, you're going to remember that. But also (laughs) a lot of the other stuff, right, is your relationships and your experiences. And whenever I talk to anyone, you included, but anyone else on this show or just in general, and you're like, oh, what do you miss most? It's always that kind of stuff. Not, oh, I miss having a 1.5 three ERA in college. I've never met a single person that's ever said something like that, you know? No, like you, I don't think you even remember who was actually playing the game unless it was like a very key like moment. Other than that, it's kind of like who, who played on 
this position when we won the gold medal like i nobody knows or cares like we won the gold medal you know like it's just like it's it's being there with your team it's leading up to that big moment it's not who was on the field who wasn't on the field it, at the end of the day nobody will really remember all of that so yeah. i think yeah you you hit that spot on too <laughs> well it's funny because i saw a, i think it was a tweet you had sent out this was like maybe a month or so ago but you were like bruh i need to write a book or make a movie y'all wouldn't believe my life story this ride has been wild first of all <laughs> Love a good bruh. <laughs> Love that. Because sometimes well, you just need to say it. Yeah. Yes. You just got to say it sometimes. It's, you have to emphasize mm-hmm. it, right? But also, mm-hmm. like, yes, like seeing a lot of the experience that you would share. And of course, social media, to your point, it's like, that's just a sliver of it, right? Like, there's so much more going on beyond just what's on social media. But I know you try to share as much as you can. But it's mm-hmm. like, that's, that's the point is like, you have turned what would be considered, like you said, people, it's not that you shouldn't be able to have done these things, but that's maybe what some people would say. And some people have yeah. said to you in your life, but you did it anyway. So you have turned what like shouldn't be into what absolutely can be. And I think that mm-hmm. is so cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's the whole thing for sure. I, I know that I sent out that tweet and it's just been recently, I mean, life has been crazy and I've shared with you like some of the most random things that I've been doing, like, <laughs> randomly living in North Shore, going to the Grammys, being in these movies and doing yeah. these things. Like in a few weeks, I'm walking in the Hawaii Swim Week show for uh, for fun. Like, Amazing. it's just all these random opportunities that have come up. And it's just funny because I, I like to share my, my story of my upbringing because it's not like I was prepping for this, ready for any of this. Like, I really came from humble beginnings and I, and I mean that wholly, you know, I, I share my story online about coming from my parents, just being these amazing parents coming from a really rundown neighborhood here in Hawaii and with all odds stacked against you being in the middle of the ocean and nobody really went to the extent of like what I've gone to in softball. So it just wasn't like a path. It wasn't like, here's the step-by-step plan to get there. So coming from this small beginning, facing hard times of like, My mom having a stroke, slight homelessness from here to there when I was in high school and nobody really knowing and just all of these really, really dark and like, you know, kind of like deep experiences of moments where I was like, sheesh, like, you know, I guess I guess some people just lose in life, you know, like Mm -hmm. I've really sat there at some times and been like, I really I have nothing I and even been like it's just so unfair that like some people can have all of these things given to them and it's like why do I have to work so hard to get anything and that's that's where I like to share my background of like I've really been through it and to see where I am today and how I've really just embraced everything coming at me and made made every situation I kind of flip it into a positive I find the good in it and getting to the place where now I can start giving back to like the Hawaii food bank and giving back to the kids and my community and being this person that people look up to. And they're like, wow, look at all these cool things she's doing. That's so amazing. It's like, yes, I'm doing all these awesome things, but it's like, I, I really like you could do it too. It's, Hmm. it's basically the story that I like to tell because it's like, if I can do it, you for sure can do it because I was once, I once had nothing and I once really had to, just work my way up to where I am today. And I think it's kind of just going with the flow, working hard, staying on your path. I know it's so hard with social media and all of that, like, oh, you could be doing this, you could be doing that. And then sometimes, I mean, I guess I'm a little bit spazzy with it. I'm like, oh, I'll do this and do that. But like now I'm in a place that I'm, I'm kind of able to do that a little bit more. Yeah. But it's just really focusing like on your path and nobody else's path. Because if you really commit to you, what your heart feels, the places that you want to go in your passions it's like one day you'll look up and you'll have all of them and you won't you won't even expect half of them like they'll be better than what you imagined if you really just like lock in and focus on you know making yourself happy and surrounding yourself with good people and all of that things you know that is such an important point 
sometimes it's not necessarily what we would have expected or even planned for. Or maybe we had a very specific goal and that's not what we ended up doing, but we actually did this really awesome thing over here that's different that was even better for us than we thought in the first place. Like that is such an important part and the fact that you're being very realistic of what the, the situations have been in your life because so many times it's easy for us to be like, yeah, you know, and some people keep it super high level, right? Things were tough, but like, look at me now. It's like, yeah, but the things were tough part was very real, right? Like it wasn't a casual thing and you were still able to do it. And it's great that it's positive in the end, but the realistic parts of it too are what are so relatable. Yeah, yeah. I just want kids to know that if they're in similar situations or even as we move, move on, like college athletes, people who have graduated from college, just all of these things it's just really relatable like you can you can really do all of these things and I think that I think you just nailed it on the head with what you were saying with that for sure yeah well if I nailed it it's only because you've nailed it with your life so (laughs) (laughs) I just said the words but you've done it right so (laughs) this is I need to like hire you to be like the person that speaks for me like I'll say everything and then you'll be like okay but here's like you know how it's like the translator of like, this is what she meant to say yeah. in a really quick blimp. <laughs> like, yes, yes. It's so funny. I, I don't know if you've watched like Key and Peele at all. Um, some yeah, of so that's stuff. exactly what yeah. I was thinking about. Okay, yeah. The Obama translator, right? Like the anger translator. Yes. It's so funny. Yeah, I, so I will go search up that. <laughs> I will do that for you. <laughs> You're hired. You're literally hired. I need that in my life for sure. Uh, but no, yeah, but that's I, why. It's, it's just awesome. all these crazy stories and... Um, coming from where I've come from, I'm just thankful to be where I am today. And I just hope that I can, one, show people like, oh, wow, like she's doing crazy things. But it's like also that they could do it too. You know, just yeah. just go for it. Yeah. It's not just the crazy things themselves. It's the fact that anyone can do anything. And, yes. You know, it's hard to believe sometimes, but it's true. Yeah, yeah, totally. And and my journey, I, I haven't always been handed the thing, like where I am now, like you were saying, isn't where I thought I would be. I mean, coming out of high school, I was a late recruit because I was from Hawaii. Mm-hmm. Um, I went to Fresno State out of all of my offers. I didn't really know how to navigate the whole um, like experience of how to even get recruited because I I didn't really know what that meant like people would give me their cards and at the time you had to call them like coaches couldn't call you yeah so I would just like we have like this collection of cards and of cards we didn't call like I'm just like oh thank you for your card like awesome see you later and then I would like wait to see if they would contact me and I'm like oh maybe they didn't want me it was like you literally were supposed to call them so yeah um, yeah so yeah it, it, it comes from like really just taking what feels right instead of instead of being like oh I want to go to like Stanford UC Berkeley I want to go to the big school out the gate and if I don't then I'm a failure it's like Hmm. really it's it's whatever hand you're dealt you know like I grew up in a small town I had to do what I could with holes in my shoes um sometimes doing extra training just by myself uh traveling to the mainland and living on a budget and eating sandwiches for every couple meals you know and then going to Fresno State which was the perfect fit for my experience at the time so even though even though it may not have been like the biggest school in the world like they had a ton of tradition I love Trisha Ford when she recruited me like there was all these amazing things and like reasons for me to go to Fresno State so you really just go with it go to Fresno State I have my experience there, which is amazing. And then the opportunity to go to UC Berkeley comes up. So then that's where you take that next step and you kind of just like go with the hands that you're dealt and you don't look to the side left or right and say like, oh, I didn't do this. So now I'm like, I give up or I didn't go to this huge school. I give up. It's like, no, like, look at, I, I was given Fresno and then I really just grinded it out. And then after that, I went to the Pac-12 grinding it out. And then I didn't even think that pro ball was an option for me. And then I get the offer to play pro ball, get to travel yeah. the world with Puerto Rico. It's just the opportunities will come in per- God's perfect timing. So I say no rush, you know, just really do what feels right in your heart and don't don't get down on yourself if it's not like what you thought it would be. Because if you trust the process, it'll be better than what you thought it would be for sure. Yeah. And making the most of the opportunities you, you do get. I think that was huge. Like you're talking about Fresno, you're right. Well, you made the most of that. And then it took you to, to even do more things after that. Right. But it's like, if we are 
sulking about not getting the opportunity we wanted or something else, then that doesn't happen, you know? So it's having the mindset to, to really make it all it can be. That's so important. And also, by the way, um, Trisha Ford was my assistant coach when I was at Stanford. So (laughs) no way. Yeah. Gosh, she's, she's so amazing. When you were at Stanford, did you play with a Millwood sister? I did. Jamie Millwood. I was going to bring her up too. Yes. So she was a couple years below me. Yeah. And she, um, we actually went to, I mentioned like I went to Hawaii for a tournament, right? My sophomore year. It was actually Mm -hmm. her senior year in high school, but we did go to her house and her family like hosted a, a meal for us. In oh, Hawaii. no way. Yeah, That's so Hawaii of cool. them. <laughs> yeah, right? Right, it was. And they did a good job. Our coaches did a good job of trying to set that up if somebody was from, like, a certain area, right? But I thought that was really cool yeah. considering she hadn't even, like, come to Stanford yet, and they all organized that. It was it was awesome. And I think we had some pretty authentic Hawaiian food. I couldn't tell you what it was, though, off the top of my head. It's been, like, <laughs> over 10 years. <laughs> so that's why I need to come back. <laughs> yeah exactly yeah come visit us that would yeah that would be awesome I mean your experience at Stanford must have been awesome even though we're like secret sworn enemies Cal and Stanford <laughs> see the, the more people from Cal that I talk to though like you I've talked to Chelsea Spencer has been on the show you know like some others I'm like do I like Cal people more than I ever thought I think that's true <laughs> and I'm like who am I <laughs> yeah but, like oh my gosh Chelsea Spencer I'm just stoked that she's so good she's the one to lead cal right now yes that's like the one thing that cal like she her energy is gonna just do the program so well so i'm so stoked for her and the future of cal softball for sure i'm gonna be their biggest supporter (laughs) yeah i believe it and i am too like i know we're joking around right like yeah i'm a stanford alum but you know what like back the pack There's a lot of respect, I think, between the two programs and the two schools, too, even though, of course, there's a rivalry. But we had a similar situation Mm -hmm. with Jessica Allister as an alum, right? She came back, brought that energy. I just like to see that for Bay Area softball, too. Totally, yeah. I love seeing all the programs just, like, level up and get get to that next, like, level that they truly deserve to be at. And I truly deserve that Stanford and Cal should be leading the nation Mm -hmm. in... Every, everything, everything. See, so. this is why we get along. <laughs> this is why. All right, I'll see you at the big game. <laughs> I know. Year. Well, yeah, then then maybe things will change. We get along now. But yeah. we'll, when the axe <laughs> comes into play, things things change. <laughs> yeah. We'll tussle a little. It'll be fun. I know. Nice. I know it will. It will be super fun. That's so yeah. funny. I love that so, so much. Good. Well, I would honestly keep talking to you forever especially like I said I'm in I'm enjoying you mostly but also your background I'm like oh it's so nice I feel I feel like calmed by Hawaii's yeah, energy was, behind you too was, um here we are We're it's so nice currently at Koalina here's the rest of my view so see gosh I'm so jealous yeah it's hard to Man. leave that's for sure yeah West, I get it West. That's all right. You guys can come and visit everybody know, who's listening to the podcast. Exactly. That's what that's that's the solve right there. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, I'm gonna make a plan. Jenna's gonna come out, and then mm-hmm. we'll we'll let all of you guys know who's listening in. Just shoot us a message, and we'll we'll book you a room here at this beautiful hotel right here. <laughs> exactly. We'll go in on it. It's great. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> oh, well, I do hope that we make something happen. That would be awesome. But before I let you go today. I wanted to play a little game with you that I play with everyone who comes on the show. So it's called Safer Out. Basically, mm-hmm. I will bring up a topic. And if you like it or you agree with it, then you call it safe. But if you don't like it or you don't agree with it, then you'll call it out. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. You're kind of the umpire today, basically. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's see how I do. <laughs> okay. Okay. So first one is the transfer portal. Safe or out? Oh, that's a hard one, but I say I, I went through the worst transfer experience ever, so safe. Mm. So I like you it. you would prefer this to what your experience was at the time, yeah. it sounds like. Yeah, it's, it's a wild, wild west right now of everyone moving to any school, but I say safe. Yeah. Like was it. it just like difficult logistically? Because I feel like it would be really hard to just coordinate it everything. Was, yeah, it was really hard. And, you know, just like the experience of trying to transfer as an ace pitcher and 
right. there's just a lot now like i really thanks to daniel tool at the time yeah coming right before me um i pretty much had my pick of what school i wanted to go to since the mountain west pitcher of the year previous that transferred yep. out had such a great experience so i mean everyone was like this is a proven thing like the mountain west pitcher of the year can hang for sure at any school yeah. that they go to that's so true. i had my pick but i would have loved to like I mean, I probably still would have ended up at Cal just because it just made sense for me. But it's just I would have loved to see what schools were coming in because I already mm. had like all a ton of offers. But they were kind of just like, I don't want to say under the table, but they were just like word of mouth. Like, oh, this school mm. definitely like, if you want to plan a visit, let me know. We'll we'll get this to happen. And mm. um, it would have been really cool to just be able to kind of have I don't know how the transfer portal works, if they just shoot you an email or something. But that would have been just yeah. interesting yeah like a little more structure that makes sense mm-hmm. that makes sense yeah it was okay. really just running around yeah so I say <laughs> safe okay that's fair that is totally fair okay next yeah. one and you touched on this a little bit so I think I could guess but NIL safe or out uh I say I say safe I'm I'm happy for the girls I almost want to say out because then that would give the pro athletes more sponsorships in every mm. category but but it's not about us right now. It's safe. It's okay. <laughs> That's interesting. I hadn't thought about that. You're right, because there's so much visibility for college softball that... Yeah. Yeah, that's it. That's super interesting. M- maybe, yeah, I mean... And it's, it, just every... I say, like, in general, so, like... And now that football players can get such big deals, it's just a lot of the marketing budget. Just this is my nerd marketing partnerships yeah. background coming out. Like a lot of the budget will go to like these huge football stars and stuff right. in college. So I feel like it, it doesn't necessarily take away from like women pro sports and women athletes in general. But I mean, I feel like maybe if I did some deep diving, then we could see something there for sure. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. that's interesting. Hopefully, I mean, ideally the college athletes like a Jocelyn, for example, um, now that NIL was in place for her, hopefully it's like she can start that momentum in college, but can continue it in pro. That's what we hope, right? That's what we hope. Yeah. 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 I think, I think that's, that's where I would say like totally safe. And I wish I had it in college because that would have been amazing. Yeah. So yeah. Safe. It's funny you brought up Danielle O'Toole too, because she said, she came on the show recently too. Um, and she, she's been on a couple of times, but she said, yeah, if I, if we had NIL when I played, I would have made bank. <laughs> I was like, totally. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It would have been so fun. Yeah. Daniel O'Toole is like one of my favorite people that I've met from Athletes Unlimited. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Well, and I do think it's pretty cool. You made that parallel too, from when she went from playing in San Diego and then to Arizona and then you did something similar with Fresno State Cal. I hadn't put that together, but you're absolutely right. That's such a cool parallel between you guys. Yeah. Yeah. So it was cool. She definitely led the way. And then from there, I pretty much had my pick. I was like, yeah. thank you, Tuli. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the point, right? Like she paved a path just like you're doing. So that's perfect. Totally. Okay, cool. Well, last one is bat flips. Safer out. <laughs> oh, that is a hard one. Like, I respect a good bat, bat flip, but if anyone ever bat flipped me, I would have to rush the rush the home plate. That I would literally be so salty. I would think about it for the rest of my life, probably, if it was a terrible bat flip. <laughs> You know what? You shouldn't. As a pitcher, I'm just gonna say, just don't, don't pitch it where they can hit it 350 feet. So that's also true. Yeah. I'll. I'd say if I was a batter, I would be so disrespectful with bat flips. I'll be flipping <laughs> for everything. So safe. I say safe. <laughs> that is very progressive thinking for a pitcher too. I like that <laughs> because a lot of pitchers immediately right are like, no, out no conversation but that that is progressive thinking yeah i want to i want to personally say out but i want to say safe just because i love like those moments where like big game you see the girl bat flipping nothing makes me go more wild unless i was the pitcher it it depends if i'm the pitcher out out. yeah (laughs) if i'm not the pitcher safe safe that's amazing (laughs) yeah fair enough i totally get that actually (laughs) i respect that (laughs) I, I, i feel terrible for them and I would personally cry every day after that. But 
safe. That makes the game so fun. <laughs> it does. It's hard to it's hard to argue that, does isn't it? It's like, yeah. Even if you want to say out, you're like, people talk about it though. You know, it makes it interesting. So I've always been called a really entertaining player throughout my entire like experience. And I've probably toned it down in college, but yeah, I'm totally the type of person that if a batter bat flipped me, like I would sit them down the next at bat and then like flip backflip off of the field or something like I would do some, something That's, equally as like <laughs> yeah I mean pitchers like hey find an equivalent I don't know if you could like flip your glove I don't know if that's weird but you know like something you could yeah, yeah so, I mean yeah I would I would find a bat in the dugout and then flip it later or something <laughs> like <laughs> that's fair hey it's fair Oh my gosh, I totally love this podcast. This is so fun. You're so awesome to talk to. <laughs> they, well, hey, right back at you times a million because this has been so good. I knew it would be, but I'm just glad that we were actually able to do it because mm -hmm. I, I love hearing your story and just getting to know you a little bit and hopefully now planning a trip to Hawaii. So there's that. Yes, <laughs> I'm, I'm excited. I'm so excited. Yeah. Well, thank you again. This was so fun and good luck too. I know you're in the off season right now, but I know you have a lot coming up after that. So good luck. I will be cheering you on the whole way. Amazing. I hope we get to talk stories again soon. Thanks yes, for inviting absolutely. me. It's such an honor to be a part of this. <laughs> I'm glad you could hear the rest of the conversation with Kama because I think she has a great and grateful energy that resonated with me. So I hope it did with you too. And with that, let's transition to the foul tip of the week. This week's foul tip is about embracing it. And, you know, we've talked about embracing things before on the show. And in past foul tips, even, we talk about embracing what makes you, you. Aubrey Monroe talked about that a lot. Or embracing opportunity over pressure. Even embracing the and both concept, meaning something can be scary and exciting at the same time. Or it can be happy and sad. We talked about that a lot in terms of just the Olympic experience, how it's tough afterwards but it's still so worth it. That's where that sort of bittersweet description comes from. Today, I want to talk about the core of what embracing things means. It requires us basically to submit a little bit because it means that not only are we accepting a situation, but we're making the best out of it, using it to our advantage, and even enjoying it in the end. And some examples that I would give is, you know, I just had another birthday, like I mentioned, and as much as I don't want to get older... <laughs> Resisting it just would make it a bad experience. You know, what's the point of creating bad experiences for ourselves when we don't have to? That just ends up making it a waste of time, which is the last thing we need, especially as we get older. So embracing it and celebrating the fact that I'm alive and I have good people and passions in my life was a million times better. Another great example is Kama herself, how she embraced her humble beginnings. She was super honest about just having those natural moments where she had a bad moment maybe and thought, wow, I might not be meant to have good things. Like not everybody is dealt a really great hand. But overall, she embraced those memories of sleeping on air mattresses, having to travel to the mainland, sharing a room with her dad and Jocelyn Allo and her dad. And it just actually helped her embrace who she is and where she comes from. And I am a big believer that you can't really be successful and happy unless you do that. It's not to say the path of least resistance is always the best. You know, sometimes we have to go through hard things or push back for what's right or for what's worth it. But resisting for the sake of resisting doesn't really get you anywhere. Sometimes giving in in a positive way is exactly what we need. So that's it. Embrace it. That's the foul tip of the week. You've been listening to Believe in Softball, part of the Believe Network and presented by Bet Online. The show is available anywhere you get your podcasts, wherever you listen, including Believe.com, and you can watch the videos on YouTube too. Subscribe, rate, and if you liked it, write a review for the show. Appreciate your support. Always want to know what you think. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Believe in Softball. That's B L E A V. You can always reach out to me on Twitter at JennaBacera01 and Instagram at JennaBacera as well. As always, thank you for tuning in and catch you soon.